Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the Lord. We're here again in excitement for church. Amen. How many are ready for the word? Praise the Lord. We're teaching on your freedom in Christ, which is righteousness. And we're on our session number four. Let's open up with prayer and let's thank the Lord for what we have here. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name for this awesome teaching. We ask the Holy Spirit to give us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. And we thank you, Lord, that we have the knowledge of God given to us through these sermons. We bless you now in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, yes and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Righteousness and sin consciousness were continuing from last session. And I sure excited about you having this knowledge. So you be sure and you want to open up this information to all the friends and people that you know to have them come here to hear it in person in the name of Jesus. So in class number four, we are going to start right now. And consciousness of sin also covers and cowers from God's presence. And so a lot of times you, you run across people who have given their hearts to the Lord, and yet they do something ignorantly and sin, and they're aware of it, and then they say, well, I don't want to go to church. That's because that consciousness of sin is talking to them rather than righteousness, consciousness. Now, we see in the scriptures, in Genesis chapter 3, 8 through 13, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Amen. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Amen? So we got to realize that the devil comes along to misconstrue things and get you mixed up. But sin consciousness will cower from God rather than relate to him and to talk to him. And this is where people get mixed up. Sin consciousness has a pattern. Okay, number one, Adam blames the woman. Number two, Adam accuses God and excuses the serpent. And number three, the consciousness of sin constantly drives you to cover up and accuse. So when you see people doing that, you start realizing what's really operating in their life is sin consciousness. They're afraid of the consequence. They don't know how to sit down and talk and share. All right? So sin consciousness has an education process. Now, I'm about to share some insights because people learn how to sin. And they have a pattern and they have an education process. They learn how to sin a whole lot more than to become righteous. Okay, number one, there is an intelligence in darkness and you can, and you can become very educated in the process. Okay, all of a sudden, there are people with tracks, and they're going to come up to you, and you see them coming, and they're going to talk to you about Jesus. But you have an education from the devil, and you'll say, oh, I already got one of those. So they don't come and talk to you about it. Or, yeah, I got one of those last week, and yeah, I've been doing this and that. And they leave you alone. Your educated in darkness has caused you 
not to even get close to the light that God has planned for you. So there is a intelligence in your darkness. Okay, number two. The street people is a whole new arena of education. They lie, they cheat, and they cover up. And they'll never tell you the truth. They get upset, they're angry, they point fingers at you. There's an education of becoming a street person. You don't know what it's like to be outside when people do certain things. There is an education out there that they will do. And, um, you know, it's like you see the guy, sign, the, the sign, homeless, out of work. God bless. And I drove up to a place the other day, and they were becoming aggressive. And they come down the walkway, waiting for four or five cars for the light, trying to get you to do Really? Then I saw another person who has a sign up, and he says, I need anything you can give me, but I won't approach you. You just let me know, and I'll be happy to receive from you. And he's out there doing whatever he's doing. And nobody gives him any money. So they are trying to learn a way to get you to give them money. There's all types of education in the street. Okay? So, number three, in your sin consciousness of education, you become developed in sin conscious life and become very proficient at it. Able to cover every step, then live that way, believing your own lies. And I see people acting macho, and I see people saying certain things, and they are actually continuing their life like, even on Facebook, even in person, they're believing their own lies, they're doing what they normally would do, and they think they're fine. How many know that they're not, but they think they are. They're so educated in their sin consciousness that they don't know how to cover up with all kinds of lies. Amen? All right. So they become very developed. And number four, we must be instructed in all teachings on how to live righteously. So it's an important part. And number five, everyone needs a training process to teach righteousness. Thinking with the word of God as their manual. So righteousness thinking is going to take some time. Do you think because you heard the word of God that you are righteous, you got it made now? So how does a righteous person live when you've been living like sin conscious for the last 20 years of your life? It's taking some time. So how do you get that righteousness thinking if you're not taught properly in situations? Okay? So I'm going to teach you a little bit about righteousness versus reason. Righteousness versus reason. Reason. Number one. Adam fell from supernatural ability to human ability, from a God-given resources to natural resources. So God was taking care of everything, then he made a sin mistake, and now he's got to fend for himself. So reasoning gets in mind, okay? So Adam's mind and body functions became totally limited to his senses. So we're using Adam, but how many know that well, I saw so-and-so do something, so I'm going to do it. I heard about what so-and-so is doing, so I'm going to do it. I feel really hurt. You're going through reasonings, and you're going through all your five senses. You know, it doesn't smell very nice down here, so I'm leaving. You got all of the senses talking to you, giving you reasons to quit. Number three, faith and fellowships die then reason was born. So Adam's, you know, hey, I have to work for a living now. And, and you talk to people outside the church. All they think about is how can I get money to survive? That's their thought. How do I survive this earth? How do I get by? Well, if I don't have a good job, then I won't have any money. And if I don't have any money, I can't survive. Where did faith and righteousness come even though that's in the church, okay? So let's talk about some righteousness, all right? Biblical training in righteousness is very necessary. 
biblical training in righteousness. Now, I've watched a lot of people who are, quote, unquote, very well-to-do ministers, and they go around the world preaching and teaching, and God's working with them. But they get a little mixed up on righteousness, and they stick law in it. Because that's what people want to hear. No, it's not what they want to hear. They're duped. God wants you to hear righteousness, and training in that from a biblical understanding is very necessary. Number two, we must constantly meditate in God's Word on the topic of righteousness. Are you meditating on man believeth unto righteousness? Meditation on God's Word about righteousness is got to be done. Otherwise, you're just going to hear what somebody else says, believe what they said, and do no research on your own. God wants you to meditate. Okay? Alright, now let's talk about some symptoms of sin consciousness. Symptoms that come along that cause you to feel self-conscious. The natural becomes our first perspective of what we think, what we do, or achieve, rather than the fellowship perspective with God ruled by the realm of senses. So people get into this, well, that's what I went to school for. I became a doctor in such and such field because that's what I've learned how many can see that's not walking with the Lord that's doing something yourself okay the natural becomes your perspective well I have to go to a doctor of medicine to get healed really well yeah everybody does it is that is that what you're supposed to do see you're living in the world acting like the world instead of hey if I need healing, my God will take care of me instantly. Now, I don't have to wait 21 days. Righteousness consciousness sees itself as more than a conqueror with ability to fellowship with God. Say amen. amen. Righteousness consciousness sees yourself as more than a conqueror with the ability to fellowship with God. So nothing's going to hold me down because I know the answer from the Lord in Jesus' name. A lot of times people perceive inferiority. Perception. Perceiving oneself as inferior. As if someone else has more of a relationship with, with God than you do. Well, so-and-so hears the voice of God all the time and I don't hear anything in it. You're looking at yourself with inferiority. And God says, no, you're equal. We're one. So what does inferior mean? It means low or lower in space, lower in order, lower in rank, lower in quality, value, and subordinate. That's what inferiority means. Okay? To be conquered by one or forced to yield to one to make less or to overcome. And bondage means to be make a slave of or reduced to bondage. We get caught in food addictions and it's a bondage. And yet, you don't have to. Our second scripture is in 2 Peter 2 and verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. So we see that happening. So a lot of times people perceive guilt and condemnation. Okay? Be aware of past failures in penalties and the sentence that must be paid more than God's power through you, which is able to change you or your situation. You're looking at guilt and condemnation and you're going to be paying a penalty and you have to I have seen people say oh man I did this wrong I sh oh man I made a mistake God's mad at me I've got to go up and pray pray and pray oh Lord and then they start crying and then they start getting oh Lord I and they do this for a week or longer and I go excuse me didn't you just ask God to forgive you yeah well then you're done but that's that condemnation. That's that guilt that's coming over on people. And your 
perceiving it incorrectly. Condemnation means to convict and pass adverse sentence upon someone. A lot of people feel that, and they don't have to. Under, under your own ability with a sense of insecurity. Insecure means not safe from danger, unprotected, the feeling of more anxiety than seems warranted. Okay, there's a lot of ladies who feel insecure because their husband's not making enough money and that causes fear, and then they feel insecure. So what happens is it's a lack of faith in health, in wealth, in peace of mind, lack of faith in boldness, having pressure of self-defense operating, using natural remedies, tending to natural plans, resorting to natural wisdom. A lot of people get into this, i got to take care of myself. Excuse, uh, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. What about God? What, is he going to take care of you? See, are you having fellowship, communing and talking to the Lord about a situation? He will answer you. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One of the things you've got to realize is that you can recognize fear as a major factor in life. Fear comes and it just shocks people, stops them dead in their tracks. The other part of that is lack of boldness with God and lack of boldness with the devil. Did you hear me? Lack of boldness with who? God. I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I just can't come up to God and ask Him for something. Why not? Give me this day my daily bread. Oh, pff, excuse me, that's pretty bold. Amen. So what happens? Sin becomes your master. And we're talking about freedom in Christ, which is your righteousness. So our next scripture is in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 17. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Okay? For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of many be dead, much more the grace of God and a gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto what? Justification. For if by one man's offense death reign, by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life, by one, Jesus Christ. Amen. So because Adam sinned, the nature of sin conferred to all humanity without having willfully engaged in any act. But nature, it became ours. So I didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. But Adam did, and that's what brought sin into the world. So we've got to realize, I have a choice. I don't have to sin. I can stop. I can quit. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Sin recreates you into an image and likeness that perpetuates itself through your life. And a lot of people don't realize that, but you know, as I grew up, tried to get into different things for money and stuff, well, you can lie and cheat just so you can get that thing sold. That's sinning. That's, that's, that's wrong. You're cheating somebody to get your advantage, and that sin does this to you. But you think... It's okay, because if I don't, he will, and I won't get the money. And so money is a problem? Mm -hmm. It's called lack. Say amen. So in Romans chapter 5, we see in verse 13, For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. What's that mean? Nobody knew that there was a law. Nobody knew there was sin they were sinning until God brought up the Ten Commandments. So, until you hit the guardrail, the law 
You are not aware that wrong is wrong until someone says that it's wrong. How many found out that when you were a kid, and you're only like three or four, maybe five, and they told you, you can't do this, and you did it anyway. You broke the law of what was spoken. And you don't know it's wrong until someone tells you that it's wrong. As far as you're concerned, it's okay. How many think you're all fine? Everybody here, everybody thinks you're fine. Everybody thinks you're just doing everything right. Until you found out that three times three is not seven. It's wrong. It's not correct. Until you make the adjustments to figure out, oh, that's what I did. All right. What you got to understand is sin makes you think you're fine. Okay. The law comes to reveal. Then you cover it up. Wasn't me. I didn't do that. Mm -mm, must have been that guy over there. And divert and project and get it off him. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to listen. Just get off my back. Leave me alone. Everyone does that when the sin comes because the truth comes to reveal. Oh, it was the woman you gave me. Like it's God's fault he gave you a woman. Mm -hmm. See, people get into that. Some people even use religion to appease sin consciousness rather than go to church and find that there is a new lifestyle available. They use money, prayer, church attendance, the choir, and church activities as fig leaves to cover up. Well, we go to church so we can be on the bowling team. We go to church so we can be on a basketball team. We go to church. Well, I don't know if I bring my ties in. I just forgot. Okay, I'll make it up next week. Maybe next week comes. Oh, I didn't have that because I, I stood up late last night. I didn't get to church on time, so I'll just sleep in, forget it. And you start covering up your wrongs. Many have taken righteousness as a work of the law, and it's not. It's a gift of faith. Righteousness is a gift. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 17... For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So if someone gives you a gift, do you open it up and you look at it and you go, I don't know what this is. I don't know what I use for it. I'll just set it aside. I might even donate and give it to somebody else. People do that with gifts. Sometimes they look at that gift and go, that's not what I wanted. Some people open up their gift and go, whoa, this is exactly what I want. Some people say, I don't know what this is. What do I do with this? Without investigating and checking stuff out, what do you do with your gift of righteousness? Question. Amen. So, when you act on this revelation, you reign, and you act as a king. Otherwise, sin consciousness becomes your king. You will be under the dominant influence of one or the other. How many would prefer to be under righteousness consciousness? Amen? Now, the best part of this is to be continued. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this awesome teaching and teaching us what's wrong and how we can turn it around and live righteous as kings in Jesus' name. We give you praise and glory for all that you've given us. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving that revelation to us. And all the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you, you pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. 
We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.